before I, before I bring up Kim, uh, let me just say a couple words about this campaign. I know that many of you have probably been uh, uh, watching the news over these last several months and you thought to yourself, my goodness, how could so many of my neighbors support a guy like this? The more overtly racist and fascist his appeals, it seemed the stronger his base became convinced that he was just the sledgehammer we needed to break the kitchen table. Well, breaking the kitchen table doesn't put more food on it, does it? And fear and anger never built up a great country. That's not what our parents and grandparents did. They understood, as Hillary Clinton understands, that our economy is not money, it's people. It's all of our people. And that's why Hillary Clinton has put forward the actual action she would take, investing in infrastructure, raising the minimum wage, common sense wage and labor policies that allow people to join unions if they choose, paying equal pay for equal work for men and women. How about that? Yes, sing it with me, guys. When women succeed, America succeeds. Good job, gentlemen. <laughs> But, but there's something else at play in this whole race, and it is whether or not we're still going to be the nation whose national symbol is the star, is uh, the Statue of Liberty, or whether we're going to trade in the Statue of Liberty for barbed wire fences, for-profit prisons, big walls. I've been blessed to visit a lot of college campuses all over our country. And you know what? I never find among the ranks of our young people, and they will tell you where our country's headed if you listen to them, you'll never find among them many climate deniers or immigrant bashers or people that want to deny rights to gay couples or their kids. That tells me we're moving to a much more compassionate, much more connected, and a much more generous place. But it must be said, a lot of our neighbors have some reason for being frustrated. We've seen wages decline over the last 12 years for the first time uh, as this side of World War II. And no great football team, no great football team ever won the game by leaving at halftime. We are right now at halftime in our nation's economic recovery from the Bush recession. Thanks to President Obama, as a nation, we have created 79 months in a row of consecutive monthly positive job growth, the largest string since 1939 to any president. That's the best string of consecutive job growth that any president has pulled off uh, since 1939 when we first started keeping records. But it was only last year that we finally saw medium incomes go up. Median family incomes went up like $2,800. That's great, but a lot of people aren't feeling it. A lot of people aren't feeling it, and they probably won't feel it for another couple of years. We've got to take to the field with Hillary Clinton as our leader. She is advancing the common sense economic policies that we need. She can be commander in chief. She, uh, I, look, I'm one of the few people that could come here to Ames and, and tell you, Kim, that I have campaigned with Hillary Clinton, and I have campaigned against Hillary Clinton. <laughs> And Hillary Clinton is one tough person for this one tough job of President of the United States. She can be Commander-in-Chief on day one. She has traveled the world. She will stand up to Putin, not be a lapdog or a wannabe like, uh, like Donald Trump. And she understands that we're all in this together, that we're stronger together, and that really is what Iowa understands as well. You guys have always had that, that ethic of, of unity and solidarity, that ability to sometimes disagree with your neighbors politically, but realize they're human beings, and that we need each other, and that we have to help each other if we're going to succeed.